Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Yes You Can Project. I'm delighted to be joined here by Zan. Hello, Zan. <laughs> thank you very much for having me this evening. And thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and for anybody who doesn't know you, would you like to um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind anyone else. Uh, I think the best way of describing myself is a multitasker. Um, at the moment, I'm most definitely, I mean, my first and main priority is mother of two boys, but I am also a model. I have been in the industry for 30 years. I had to realize that the other day that was a bit of a shock to the system, but yes. Um, and I am, well, I like to call myself a content creator, but I think other people call it influencer as well. I don't know why that word gives us a bit of a buzz, but it does. And uh, I am a blogger as well. I'm in the process of getting my website up and running. Thanks to COVID, it's a little bit delayed, but it will be up very soon. And uh, writing about lifestyle, beauty, um, style finds that work for me in my 40s, specifically beauty products that are making life easier because I'm always in a rush um, and, you know, lit places and, and specifically around where I live. I'm based in Buckinghamshire and uh, yeah, so sharing that with um, my readers. That's a lot of talent. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be a short answer. <laughs> um, well, with so many strings to your bow, like career wise, um, what would you say is the inspiration behind like fashion industry and wanting to be in the fashion industry in particular? Was it like a, a childhood in aspiration of yours, would you say? Actually, it, it was a bit of a fluke because I grew up as a real tomboy. Uh, my father Did was you? a child. Totally. And I wasn't interested in fashion. I wasn't interested in beauty products. In fact, any of that has really only come about in my 40s. Um, yeah. But I was scouted by an Italian scout who also discovered Charlize Theron and Georgina Grenville um, wow. from South Africa. And uh, I was taken over out of school at the age of 15 to go and live in Milan. And um, even then, it was like, oh my gosh, I still have this very vivid memory of walking past the dorm. I think I was going on to a casting and it was snowing. And there was a lady on a bicycle wearing a full fur coat. And I apologize because I know fur's not right. I'm totally an animal lover, but you can imagine a girl from Durban where everyone's surfing and it's like flip flop city. Um, okay, there's this incredibly glamorous woman and she had a baguette and one of her first yeah. tiny little teacup doggies um, in her basket. And she was cycling by and I went, oh, we're not in Kansas, oh, Kansas anymore. You know, it was like, wow. Um, and I think that was my first proper, you know, at 15, okay, this is not, this is not normal. Um, this is a totally different situation. But I did return to South Africa and uh, continued modeling, but my, wardrobe consisted of jeans, a lot of black clothing um, and a leather jacket uh, because it was easy to pack up in a quick, quick way and it, everything worked with it, it, with it, with everything else. And, um, you know, I could go to castings and I could live out of a suitcase because I've done that enough times um, until I hit my forties and I had a little bit of a whoa moment. I'm like, okay, I'm not, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I, did, I suddenly felt I'm not young anymore, actually. I need to grow up a little so bit. So young? <laughs> and that's how I discovered Instagram. And then seeing other women experimenting with color and yep. vibrant prints and leopard print. I discovered leopard print thanks to Ooh. Instagram. <laughs> and suddenly my husband was like, damn, you're going to need another wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know how happy you about that, but anyway. Um, so that is where my love of, fa of fashion yeah. really came Wow. I, I can't imagine how difficult that was, though, moving countries when you were only 15, because that's super young. How, do, how did you manage with the, I don't know, how did you manage with kind of 
not being ripped away from everything that you knew, but go into somewhere completely different at such a young age? Well, I think the first the first thing, obviously, you know, I didn't speak Italian. Um, yeah. I had a love one of my favorite my my school friends her mum was a teacher and I remember her giving me this little tiny piece of paper and on it were like four or five phrases or words on it in Italian and I was like, yeah well, you know what is this I'm not going to repeat what she said on there but obviously <laughs> she said you're gonna need this and I'm like I don't know what you mean and yeah she was right I did need that <laughs> That was interesting. But we went over at a, at a very interesting time. It was the time of Johnny Casablanca's um, and when the you know, fabulously wealthy Italian men owned the agencies. So we went over as 14, 15, 16 year olds and they were a there was a huge group of us that went. So there was security in numbers. I think that's my, why parents felt that, that we were fine. I'd also been at boarding school since I was seven, full boarder. So, um, and my parents often left me alone at home to look after my sister. So I was, I was quite, I would say mature for my age. I felt, I think- And independent, parents, especially if we'd been to boarding school, yeah. So um, we went over and I, I mean, that's where I learned how to live out of a suitcase, literally lived out of a suitcase because there wasn't enough cover space for all of us girls living together in this mm -hmm. uh, um, But you know, I, I'm quite, I am independent. And when I feel like something's not right for me or I, I would then just immediately make a move. And okay. it was about four months later that I felt, you know what, I need to, I need to get back home and I need to go and, and finish my schooling. I, I just yeah. felt like it was the right time for me. And I felt that um, th th there would be more time to do that. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'm really pleased I made that decision because I did then, I ended up that particular year when I should have been doing my standard nine, I couldn't go back to school. Um, okay. My school had had including Georgina Grenville, um, a couple of uh, women that had, or girls, who had become models and, um, or TV presenters or, or acting. And they felt that they needed to make a stand so that okay. you couldn't just go off. My school was very proper. It was like you had to be part of the singing and the, the acting and the um, yeah. academics and everything. So they took a stand and they, they picked me. I'm like, hang on a second. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I, I ended up doing my schooling at home and then I joined a school for my matric. So I actually matriculated at the same time as all my friends, which is was something that was important to me. Yeah. But the, the, the modeling bug had bitten. And obviously I had this book of photographs coming from Milan. Yeah. So my agency started sending me through and in my matric year, I was doing competitions. I did um, Cosmopolitan Supermodel Competition in South Africa. Wow. Um, and then, you know, it slowly but surely progressed. And, you know, the thoughts of my parents of me doing a law degree kind of slowly started to fade. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, they are, they are entrepreneurs. Um, yeah. so I, I got that bug from them. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, something I had to study something to, to go on to that kind of um, uh, job. I, yeah. um, you know not think twice about opening up a business so mm -hmm. I got that um but yeah wow. that was well, my <laughs> would you say obviously because every, everybody wants to know like because it's something that you see on tv like you watch the, the Britain's Next Top Model America's Next Top Model programs back in the day where they kind of chucked all the girls together and you know think things happened some people got on some people didn't and it shows you like the long hours and whether or not it's edited I'm not sure but is it as glitzy and glamorous being a model that some uh, people might think it is well I mean there were moments if I if I look back on it and and keeping mind I was like I said I was a tomboy so yeah. I, went over and I was just not remotely interested in makeup and everything. I would do my job because I had been working for my parents and their business so if I was asked to be somewhere early I was you know and we were the we were known as the old school models. You know, you'd always have to have your hair clean and your skin clean and your nails yep. had to be neat, all your shoes with you and whatever else. You know, nowadays you can just pitch up. Um, but we would then, you know, go to our castings, which were never glamorous. I mean, there were just scores of girls coming in and showing yeah. their books. 
all different um, ages and nationalities. Um, but then because of our the scout who knew and was connected to everyone, we would be taken to some really incredible restaurants and then yeah. whisked off to Hollywood nightclub, um, which was like, my eyes were in sources because I was <laughs> like that. And I wasn't, I, I mean, I, I was never really a drinker or in, into um, alcohol at all, yeah. but I dance and I, you know, and it was during that time, um, I remember the Gypsy Kings, but then be coming to Milan. <gasps> the uh, the Gypsy Kings. Gypsy Kings would be in there. And I'd be like, oh my God, I love your music. And then it was a night when Mike Tyson was there. Mike Tyson was doing a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still to this day remember him coming in and he had two bodyguards and his bodyguards were like mountains on either side. I mean, my Tyson's not a small man. So these <laughs> bodyguards on either side, they were like, okay. Um, but yeah, so I remember that. But, you know, I also remember that it was the time that George Michael came out with Freedom. Oh, um, yeah. That, and I would actually prefer to be at home. And I went through this bout of like writing poetry and a lot of, I was doing a lot of writing and um, with my little camera and, and I'd be sitting at home listening to George Michael on my little, you know, cassette tape. Yeah, the little Walkmans you used to get. <laughs> I was so, so different from other girls. But yeah, no, I, I loved it. We were, we've, I'm still friends with the girls that I stayed in a model house with. I mean, wow. you know, it's like in every single uh, kind of job that you are in, there are going to be people that you just of can't. Course. It's just unfortunate. Yeah. Um, that's how hard you try. And I have unfortunately had experiences with models like that. Oh. But um, for the most part, I'm really pleased to say that everyone I got to know um, on the journey, I, I'm still friends with, or, you know, it's like the kind of people that you wouldn't see for like three or four years, and then you meet them for a coffee, and it's like, oh my God, it's, you know, it's like you- Yeah, it's like you saw them yesterday, isn't it? It doesn't matter how long it's been. It's like, because you've, you've got that special bond with that person, regardless of how long you've known them, or how, like you say, how long you haven't seen them for. It's, it's, it's the sign of a true friendship, isn't it? Where you can meet each other again and just instantly pick up from where you left off last time. But I think also um, the one thing with modeling is that because you often are in different areas of the world all the time. So potentially, you'll spot someone that you did a show with at a casting and then you just start chatting and, yeah. and then somebody else has just been to a casting or is going to another casting so you'll like tag along with them and mm -hmm. you become really and I think that that is something I actually hadn't even thought about it before but that is something that I'm really grateful for um, yeah. from that because it's it's I'm now able to effectively walk into any kind of room and be able to talk to me. And I think there are some people who go, damn, she's full on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that's just me. I'm like sparky and I'll come and talk to you because, you know, I, 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 I want to hear your story. And yeah. <laughs> friends, I'm not making new friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Um, would you say, Dan, that obviously everything that everyone's been through in the past year, would you say that the pandemic has affected your career specifically modeling um the modeling arm of your um career would you say that it's affected it in a negative way or would you say that it's brought about opportunities that you perhaps maybe wouldn't have got had it not been for the pandemic well I would probably I guess I would say in a in a negative I would say but uh, I wouldn't want to even use the word negative because I sort of I've sort of been winding it down. So I get direct bookings now. My agency knows that my kids are like forefront and they also know yeah. that I'm effectively always starting a business and working mm -hmm. on a business. Um, they've known that for quite a while. So I get called in for request castings or jobs that are, you know, they've seen my book and they know me. Or, yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously last year, it just went really, really quiet. And yeah. it just became a little bit more difficult to, I guess, get out there and get to see castings and get to the agency because yeah. I've always believed I strongly believe out of sight out of mind mind yeah. so if you're not going in Definitely. You're not going them, then they forget you and it's you know and they've got a lot of girls on their books it is just the way the the, the system works mm -hmm. um in fact there is there is a tv series on I've caught it last night and and it's about models 
going around uh, at the moment. And I don't, it's not one that I've seen, it's on BBC One, it might be. Uh, and I just oh, let's have a look at that. Yeah, she was sitting on her bed and she was like, you know, I haven't had a booking for six days. And you could see she was extremely tearful. Um, and she's like- Six you know, days? The six, oh God, I mean, let me tell Is you- that this. long in the modeling not, world? No, no, not at all. Because modeling would come on like, like there'd be nothing. And then you yeah. go, you know what? I'm gonna sit around, I'm gonna go and book a holiday. And then I would book a holiday. <laughs> and they'd be like, right, agents like, right, you've just been booked for a TV commercial you and I'm like but I'm supposed to be away that time um and it would ha and then I started thinking hang on this is the way to get a job I'm going to yeah. be away. bye <laughs> the book was oh, not <laughs> I, I I could so understand where she was coming from because I've been there you know we've all been there it's like damn when are we gonna get booked again what is it about me do I need new pictures in my book nowadays it's it's different everything is online yeah um, it's so much easier to get a casting because a lot of my castings were done where they were like could you just do a video and then upload mm -hmm. it whereas before you'd have to like travel to the other I mean some of the places I have been to to go to castings oh my god I would not I would never want to go there now I just look back on it and I go how did I just how did I do that um and I just and it's often like really young girls um or young people men and women actually being sent to really dodgy places you know and I, I can say that now because I'm I've been there I've done that but the, you you really do it's not as glamorous as it sounds but you know when when you make it or when you get that job it's absolutely bloody brilliant um but yeah so to get back to your your, your question I I have been sort of I've been doing so many different things. It's almost not really affected me as much, as much as I'd like to get back to bookings. And I know that now that we're opening up, I actually need to get up and make, you know, make it happen because you have to, uh, you have to be self. Um, uh, Acting almost. Exactly. Absolutely. Always. Um, but at the same time, I have been so busy with other things. And like, yeah. as I said to myself, I wrote the 11 plus last year. So that was, it had to be the main focus. Yeah. Um, um, and and because we were in lockdown all the time, it was slightly different to the way my <laughs> elders were <laughs> trying to get all that done. But yeah, um, I I think it's with all businesses, you just had to learn how to pivot and yeah, just um, and survive. Yeah, so definitely, I would. I would. Excuse me. I would. Let's start again. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, because you have had so much experience, would you say that a lot of the connections that you've made, specifically client wise, because you're because you've already booked a shoot with them, done a job with them and they're a client of yours. Does it ever happen where they they request you rather than you having to audition because they, if they already know what you're like? So I bet that's good having made all of the connections that you've made over the years. 100%. I mean, I would say 80% of my bookings are coming from people that I have been working for for years. And I think wow. I like to think that it's be, it's because I, I do my job. I arrive, yeah. I'm, I arrive on time. Uh, I, I still have that old school mentality where my hair has to be clean. My skin needs to be, you know, I, I need to arrive like I've been rested. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then so the makeup artist and the hairstylist and whatever else they don't have as much to do I mean I yeah. just it was ingrained in me because I started when I was 15 years old at a mm -hmm. time when we had to do that yeah. now you know they you pop it through a filter and it's like oh look she looks like she's got makeup on um yeah. <laughs> back in my day there was no such thing as I love that I can say back in my day <laughs> um no such thing I actually had to look like the photograph so. yeah wow i'm um, going back to what you said about um during the pandemic something that's um evolved during the pandemic for you has been that you are a one of the hosts on fashion fix live the podcast um th obviously the yes you can project is is all about women supporting each other um coming together and you, you can feel the energy when that happens um how how did the how did the idea for Fashion Fix Live come about? How did the four of you decide 
Well, it was Lizzie of Loved by Lizzie who contacted me. Um, it was about probably about a year, um, a year ago, and we we were chatting, and she said she'd had this idea. At the time, it was just it was when Instagram had actually created that ability to have four people on at a time doing yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And, um, I hadn't jumped on that bandwagon yet. I hadn't done any lives or anything like that. And Lizzie and I were chatting. I'd met Lizzie through through uh, um, events um, yeah. in Instagram, mm-hmm. and absolutely loved her. She's got the most phenomenal blog. Um, love her Instagram, and we just hit it off. Oh. And she started telling me that she'd had this idea to do the live and she was going to bring in Janine. Janine I'd met as well at an event mm-hmm. and um, and then of course Samantha who I knew very well through um, the Living magazines yeah. and it was like fabulous you know and we, we thought we'd do it and we didn't know if it had legs we kind of mm-hmm. you know when you you get that like that, that kind of excitement it's like yeah. you know, the, the hairs stand up because you mm-hmm. know there is this dynamic um interaction between the four of us yeah and it's like four powerhouses and and you know that you've created something special when you're all together yeah well I th- you know and the, the thing is we were getting phenomenal feedback but at the same time we just loved chatting to each other <laughs> yeah that's us. always a bonus isn't it <laughs> and then Lizzie would be like okay we have to we have to stop now you know and then um we would from that point forward, um, Lizzie would actually suggest ideas for us and then we'd put in ideas and um, it evolved into a series of six that we did. Yeah. We broke just before summer and then we stopped and we are going back for series two on the 10th of September. I'm so excited because oh. I love style and so we're going to be talking a lot about Wiccan style and um but at the same time initially it was just supposed to be the lives and the second one that Lizzie messaged us and went oh by the way I've just put this on to a podcast (laughs) wait what now (laughs) Uh um yeah and she she put us all onto this podcast and I was like wow, that was on my bucket list. I didn't, I didn't realize it. And it is now, it is live on Spotify and Apple. And I'm, I'm genuinely proud of, of what we've um, created. So definitely, um, I, I, just, I just love chatting with them, you know, so whether we on the lives or we meeting up at Vista Village, um, it's, it's just, it's all exciting. And what did I tell you? My cat has made an appearance. <laughs> it's fine. We have we have all sorts on here, honestly. We had a dog last time and a cat this time. It's abs- we have we've had kids popping in. It's what it's all about. It's just about being normal. Well, I think I think when we when we were in lockdown and we would see some of the um, people being interviewed and then the children would come in through the background. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. You're used to it. It's like, oh, you know, child walking in or you can hear a PlayStation in the background. Or <laughs> my, my cat is called Ninja and Ninja loves to appear exactly when I'm filming. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you hear the doorbell go in and they've ordered a takeaway or it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so we are back for Fashion Fix Live on the 10th of September, and I'm extremely excited. Oh, yeah. So, and for anybody who's listening um, to this on Spotify or anybody who's watching on YouTube, go ahead and listen to Fashion Fix Live because it's absolutely brilliant. All ladies are amazing, and it, it just works so well. They, they just gel as, as a foursome. It's just, it's fabulous. I have to say that is one thing that Instagram, I mean, obviously with modeling life, you've, I've met incredibly interesting people, but yeah. Instagram has created a, 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 just this pool of amazing women that yeah. I'm so proud to now call my friends. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of them I've actually never even met in real life. And yet yeah. we chat all the time. And I know that the second that we do meet, I do apologize for my uh, computer. For the it's all right. Um, um, when we do meet in real life, I mean, we're just going to hit it off because it's, yeah. it's, we have, you have common interests, which mm-hmm. you know from Instagram. So, yeah. um, and that's how we all met. We, uh, Samantha, Lizzie and Janine and I met as a result of Instagram meeting through events. And, yeah. um, yeah, now we've 
we've created something. I just I absolutely love that. And of it's, course, it's mind blowing, isn't it? That the fact that something so simple, such as a social media app, can can bring so many women together that that would have never have met otherwise it's it's crazy like some of the women that I speak to like a lovely lady that's been on the podcast Sarah she lives in Dartmoor and that's like hours away that there would have been no chance that we would have met like we couldn't have crossed each other on the street it's not like we'd have bumped into each other in a physical way and like like what you were saying about um meeting the ladies on Instagram I'm meeting Samantha for the first time next week and I absolutely can't wait I feel like I've known her for years but just because we've been speaking through Instagram so it's it's incredible yeah well I, I think um you go through phases in your life you know you have your school friends and then you well after school it was for me it was my work career so it was with modeling yeah. and, and then you have children and then you get to know the mums through your NCT or your school days mm-hmm. and then it, it got to a point where I wasn't really at the school gates I was unfortunately I was probably one of those mums who would drop my son at the school gate and then <laughs> yeah. you know, outfit of the day post I had to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Instagram Saturday you know. and then of course now I have what is they're effectively my 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 new work uh yeah um and we I think I have many different sets of friends and I think Instagram is a kind of different place and it's difficult to explain it to people that are not in Instagram it's like you know Mm -hmm. I had to get up at 6 30 and start engaging and they're like what do you mean you have to start engaging <laughs> you start speaking a particular type of language because you do yeah. that social media and so you need people who can relate to that and then you can talk to them but is this normal you know should I take on this collaboration and um it's been yeah and, and also we talk about women supporting women I cannot tell you how incredibly inspiring it has been to see women really, really boost each other up yeah. constantly. And women that would never normally have met and also are not are even of the same age group. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's really, really inspiring. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like, like you say, it's so hard to describe unless unless you're in that situation because if you were to describe it say say for example we were to describe it to our children as they were growing up oh I've met this person on the internet she's really really nice it's like it sounds so odd but in reality it's so far away from being odd it's like they just get you if that makes sense they totally do they know it's like weird hours I mean my husband has sitting here and he's super patient but even he's like oh my god you're on your phone again yes, same. <laughs> you're on that phone all the time yeah I know but I'm working yeah but you're on Instagram I know but I'm working yeah, but the best part is is when I'm because I I've now learned and I've I'm I'm trying to be really strict with myself so when we're out at a, at a meal mm-hmm. or we're doing something I, I do my like worky pics of like yeah. your you know the restaurant whatever mm-hmm. really and then I put my phone away because I just yes. feel if the phone is there, it's almost like a sign that you're not 100% engaged. Yeah. And um, so I'm really respectful about that. And I put my phone away, mm-hmm. um, obviously, unless I'm at an Insta event and then, then it's actually work. Um, <laughs> but then my husband has been at, uh, we've been at a restaurant and everything and I've seen him scrolling. I'm like, I, excuse me. Double <laughs> 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 standards. <laughs> The conversation then is, yeah, but you're always on yours. I'm like, yes, but we are dinner now. Put your phone away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the conversations we have these days. Um, yeah, it's it, it's been, I find, obviously there's a lot of talk about social media having a very negative, um, yeah. there are negative elements to it. Mm-hmm. I'm incredibly relieved and um, that so far it has been an incredibly positive place for me. And oh, I good. Because yeah. I don't, don't th- and the amount of time that you put into it and it's time is money right yeah. so um it needs to be positive and it needs to be productive yeah. and I think in terms of productive productive for me is that I want to walk away feeling energized yeah and feeling like good energy with the people that I meet yeah um, but yeah uh if it's not going to have that then it, I, I will just as quickly turn it away because yeah. I have a lot of people like to read 
<laughs> Definitely. You're so you're so right. It, it can be such a negative place. I think I've I've spoken with a few ladies about it. And I don't know if you feel the same because I I would assume because you're a model that you are super confident all the time, you've got no hang-ups, you've got no insecurities. Is that the case? Uh, absolutely not. No. Okay. Uh, you know, everything from modelling, because often you're like, well, why didn't I get that job? What, yeah. You know, what, what was it about me? Is it because my hair's too long? Is it? And you have days where you're just like, oh, I don't understand it, you know, like, why did she get booked over me? Yeah. And I, but at the same time, I felt like, I remember reading an article about Cindy Crawford where she said that there was the Cindy Crawford that went to the job. Yeah. And it was Cindy outside. And, and I think Beyonce says the same thing. She says she has Sasha Fierce. And then yes, she has, yeah, I've heard her say about her. Yeah, and, and, and I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not shy about body or anything like that, but you wouldn't see me strutting around my top off or whatever else. But then if I was in the mm -hmm. job, and I had to instantly like change out of an outfit really, really, I mean, you know, I've had to change in some pretty weird places and stuff like that. Because that, that Zahn that was doing the modeling, it was a different persona. So yeah. there's that protection factor around it. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, and I've had this conversation with other people, um, doing the Insta photos yeah. actually still make me cringe like I cannot tell you I feel like I'm just really so absolutely and I'm like but I'm a model I've posed in loads of places really? it's, a different, it's a different thing when you have like a crew with you yeah as opposed to you, you and your like uh, your stand and <laughs> yeah. you're taking your photograph I mean because yes my 10 year old my 11 year old I should say um does take my a lot of my photographs he's got a great steady hand and a good eye um but yeah I, I do I, I still cringe I, um and I've been doing this for quite a while now so yeah I don't know <laughs> it's, but it's I, almost like you have to wear a mask almost you have to be yeah. like work in the zone when you're on shoots and going for castings almost like you're acting yeah absolutely you know you've you've got to make those people believe that you're going to be the right person to yeah. promote the product or you know wear their dress and you've got to fill them with confidence mm -hmm. that when they book you you're going to do the job well so yeah you know some days we just don't get it right though <laughs> yeah. that's like everything though isn't it yeah <laughs> You're just gonna have off days, and you just gotta just gotta be kind to yourself, I guess, and go. Yeah. You know, yeah. When when I was I doing, the, so I think the last. Oh, sorry. I was, I was just gonna say. I mean, in the last year, I've noticed quite um, a lot of influences that have spoken. You know that it's 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 hit them being at home. How do they do their outfit of the days or their content? Yeah. They would normally have so and I think a lot of people have had a lot more time to think and think that can sometimes lead to dark places yeah <laughs> so yeah if, well, I mean I guess we've just got to put that protection factor back on <laughs> yeah it's, it's difficult but I think I think people have got to be kinder to themselves especially after the year that we've had that we've had you've got to be it's so hot it's so easy should I say to put yourself down and and kind of sit in those negative thoughts it's it's far harder to to be kinder to yourself and say well actually you know it is okay that I'm feeling like this today it is okay that you know I don't think I look very good it is okay that I'm feeling a bit crap about this that and the other and I think I think with social media I would say one of the negative side of things is is definitely that everyone seems to have it all together and everyone seems to be having a great day every day when really it's only such a small, small window into that person's day anyway. Um, I think that could be, have a quite, quite a negative effect on people, can't it? Well, it's that comparison mm. element that we do. It's like, and again, it comes in and it's like, well, why did that person get, why, why is that person getting so many likes on her post? Yeah. And why did they get that collaboration? I mean, people do because we want to be a success in this. It's yeah. ridiculous to do something and spend time and energy on it if you're not going to be successful. Yeah. Uh, so then that eventually leads to like, well, why is my account not growing as quickly as that mm -hmm. person's account? But every now and again, 
and, and I've had to learn this and I'm, I, it, I go through phases as well. You know, you have to pull yourself back in and just go, just relax. Yeah. You're actually yeah. working with an algorithm that nobody understands. And I'm pretty convinced that Instagram don't even understand it anymore. Yes. I think <laughs> it makes, right. um, and, you know, there are, you, you, there's no rhyme or reason why your post hasn't picked up the way somebody else's has. So just relax, enjoy it enjoy the creativity of creating that content and have fun with it. And I think the second you do that, I think that e even plays out with my modeling career. The days when I would just not be in my head and I would just be like, you know, hey, cool, whatever, book me if you want to, whatever. And then I would get the job because it's like, it's almost, you're kind of cavalier about it. It's like, you know, I don't need this. And they're like, oh, but you, we want you. Um, and I, and so that was that. And now I'm finding that if I, if I started getting, getting into my head and I started thinking, my God, why am I not working like them? Why am I not getting paid for this collaboration? Then the joy of it disappears in a heartbeat and it just becomes slog. Um, and it quickly spirals out of control. So, you know, getting back to it, it's like, you know what? I'm going to take a photograph of my cat today. And if people don't like it, they don't need to like it. I like exactly. it. Um, I love my cat. <laughs> I love my cat. In fact, actually, when I first started Instagram, I had people telling me, do you only take photographs of your cats? Which is why they ended up getting their own Instagram account. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Zan's cats. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bless you. Um, with with be obviously you've touched on um having a family and being a mum. Um, what, what would you say is the most challenging aspects of, of juggling your career and being a mum? Well, I mean, it's difficult for me because every day is different. Okay. In that um I guess it's that inconsistency. So I can't so I actually put my career really on hold when the boys were much younger. As they got yeah. older and they could do clubs after school, and now mm -hmm. that they're going into secondary schools, you know, it's a much bigger day and they're both in the same school, it's going to be so much easier. Well, yeah. so I like to make myself. <laughs> but um, that level of inconsistency and also getting a booking, and it's like, oh, by the way, you're going to be going away for four to five days. And often I would find out the day before. Yeah, and then it's, it's meant to be short notice, isn't it, with modeling and things. So I turned down the most amazing jobs and opportunities because I don't have my, if my mum and dad were not in South Africa and they were here, it would be easier. Yeah. Um, but I, I just wasn't willing to leave them with somebody I didn't know. Mm -hmm. My husband, you know, couldn't take time off. It's it's so much, it's very different now that he's working from home, but yeah. he's he's actually working. So it's not, he's not there to look after them. And yeah. Otherwise, they're quite happy to sit on the PlayStation all day. They are that age um, yeah so I think the difficulty for me was just purely being able to juggle it so that they will always and will always feel that they are my main priority yeah because they are. um I, I grew up when my parents ran an airline from home and they traveled wow. huge amounts it was great I mean I, I was I was seven and I'd be answering the phone going hello for the air yeah <laughs> <laughs> boys okay. um but you know I, I felt that they were busy they were busy yeah. and I have the hugest respect for my mom I think I was telling you before she's unbelievably glamorous ran a phenomenal house she could make the most incredible dinner party um and she was running this airline with my dad and supporting him as well as he traveled the world shooting uh, in international competitions yeah she made it really effortless um but then at the same time we were in boarding school so they yeah. they had to balance and yeah. we didn't want boys, my, my husband also went to boarding school we didn't want our boys going to boarding school so that means you know someone has to be committed at home yeah. and you know willing to I guess it's not I didn't call it a sacrifice because I've been doing this since I was 15 so yeah <laughs> I've had plenty of time to enjoy it. Um, well, it's kind of just pausing, isn't it? It's not sacrificing because you're able to go back to it, aren't you? It's, it's just kind of hitting that pause button and, and being solely focused on them. And, and I am, I have to say, I'm really relieved to say that um, the industry has evolved and are booking models in their 40s and 50s 
much more than they did when I was at my late 20s and early yeah. 30s and told that, oh, you're over the hill now. Mm -hmm. So now it's almost like we have this resurgence. And I mean, Georgina Grenville, the Gucci girl, if you, if you see, you can't walk past Zara or Matt, Mango and, and every kind of campaign, and she's there. And you wow. see the original 90s supermodels, and they're all coming back. Mm -hmm. um, the industry is saying, hey, you know, we like to see we're welcoming women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. I mean, there's some incredible models that are yeah. in 70s, it's, mm -hmm. you know. So thankfully, it's not like I've I've lost out on it. I can yeah. tell you, hopefully be able to say, hey, you know, they're at school now longer. I've got a longer day to go to castings and go and do mm -hmm. jobs and stuff like that. It's easier. Oh, that's really exciting. I mean, when I was, obviously I knew you were coming on, so I did some um, research and oh my goodness, your client list, right, this is for everyone. <laughs> Sam's San, client list includes <laughs> Ralph Lauren, Giorgio Armani, Disney, Honestly, oh, you just nice. wouldn't believe. I was reading it and I was like, oh my God, are you sure she wants to come on my podcast? <laughs> no, I've, what, what, would you, what would you say? I mean, that's to name but a few. What would you say has been your career highlight so far? Because it, it just sounds oh, incredible. Uh, well, I was basically, I was 15 and went away. Um, and I was like, went to a casting and I didn't realize because I didn't know I wasn't reading <laughs> Vogue at that age um and ended up doing a show for Armani and I just wish Instagram existed then I could have taken photographs <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I did that um and I remember I I went through a phase where I would I would stop modeling and then I would go like behind the scenes I would location scout or wow. the um the um catalogs that came over from uh, well, everywhere to Cape Town and we were doing a shoot for French Elle yeah and whilst I was there and I, I, not, I was not there as a model I was there to run the production right and they said oh no we we actually want you in the shot and I just remember thinking oh cool <laughs> okay oh. and so we ended up shooting with French Elle um and it's what well, <laughs> probably a big regret is that I never ever got a copy of that magazine but anyway um but I guess the the biggest one I guess was my tv commercial with it was for Ukes who did a uh, campaign for Disney when uh, it was Mary Poppins came out and wow. was just mind-blowing because the people that were on set because I was just fascinated by the people oh. and the creativity and they had done all the kind of animation for some of the biggest films mm -hmm. and there were people working on the crown as we were standing I was like oh my god you're on the crown can I come with can I just no look at you know um and so that was amazing and then that was actually based it was supposed to be for Italian television yeah and the next minute they picked up the TV commercial for Italian uh, film as, or um, the big screen as well. Yeah. And the next minute, so it was December, I always take my eldest son to the cinema for his birthday. Yeah. So we were sitting there with his friends and I had got a call in the morning to say, ah, it's now been picked up for UK cinema. So it's going to be on with Mary Poppins, right? I, I, would, I hadn't taken him to Mary Poppins, but I was sitting there with his friends. And the next minute, I saw some screen. There's me as oh, Mary Poppins in this TV commercial. And the kids are like, wait, wait. Oh, that is so freaky. <laughs> She's so <laughs> here. Yeah, I, I think it was just like a mega proud moment because oh. my kids were really sitting right here. I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. And it was the most amazing TV commercial. So proud to be part of. And oh. um, yeah, so do them. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I've talked to you all day, Zan. Honestly, you're, you're like you're taking me on a journey of all these magical things. It's incredible. Um, so if, if you were able to um, imagine your dream contract, if anything, like sky is the limit, who would it be with and why? Ooh, right. Well, there are a couple of things that I obviously never crossed off my list, which I guess if I was, 
you know, everything's great in hindsight. So if I was 15 again and I could whisper in my ear, I'd be like, go for the Vogue covers. Yeah. Go for the Vogue. Because I didn't know. I didn't know what Vogue was. I yeah. Know. I actually picked up Vogue until I was in my twenties. Um, but yeah, to go to go for that. But I think my my thing is television and film. So oh, wow. I kind of and I did I did some uh, television work for Canadian television in Cape, Cape Town, but I never really focused on it. I was kind okay. of. You know, was, oh, you know, I'd get a TV commercial. Blah, blah, blah. But I, I kind of really wish that, that I had had that in my mind um, because I do love, specifically live, but I love being on set. Yeah. And all the, the, the crew there, and it's just this great collaboration process. Yeah. Um, so I, th I, I think that would have been, if I could go back and say, look, that's what you need to focus on. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I've got a couple of friends who've done that and uh, it's amazing. I'm just, wow. And also write the book, believe it or not. That yeah, was my yeah. thing. I wanted to write a book by age 25 and it's still on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll ever happen. <laughs> oh, it should. Yeah. Do it. I'd read yeah. it. Just, to, just yeah. talk about your whole life. I'd be like, oh my God, Disney? <laughs> Ralph Lauren, <laughs> it would be yeah. incredible. You should do it. I would love to. I mean, I, one of the one of my regrets, and I think over the last year, I really wish I is having interviewed my father because my father was born in the thirties in South Africa, okay. and he grew up on. And it was those days where wildlife was so it was just everywhere, and he'd be telling me stories where he'd be looking around the fire, and then the you know, the cheetah would walk past and wow. you know, South Africa really carried, you know, over these years. So he's got such an incredible history there. And I just wish I had sat him down and actually kind of interviewed him over the years yeah. and put that into a book because I, you know, I, I would certainly, I, I think it's a story that should have been told. Yeah. Oh. Bless you. Is there no way that you could like convert your mum's memories, perhaps? No, I mean, actually, I, I say that like my dad's. No, dad is still here. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I, I, you can't, it's something that you kind of want to sit and you want to absorb that. Yeah. He is a, he's a phenomenal storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, so, you want to sit and you want to record him and I just kind of wish I'd done that um yeah of course thanks to COVID and South Africa and the rules relating yeah. to that we have to two weeks um lock ourselves away and then two weeks locking ourselves coming back I don't know yeah call it isolation whatever it is mm -hmm. um so making it extremely difficult yeah so but yeah you know I mean there's the telephone we do have we have ways so yeah I just need to there's, 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 you know, if you want to do something, do it. Because yeah. as the last told us, we, we don't know what tomorrow holds. Yeah, exactly. You, you were saying actually about your bucket list. What, what are your goals and aspirations for the future? Right. Well, <laughs> well, as I said to you, I mean, it's something I'd forgotten about. I'd forgotten I even had one, and it was like oh. silly thing that started bringing this about again. But um, for me. Yeah, I mean, I've been talking about getting this blog and this website up and out there for such a long time. Yeah. Um, about sitting down and actually creating a focus and a time to write and get it out there. So that definitely, yeah. and especially at the end of the year, because wow, <laughs> it's really <laughs> um, and And also to eventually write that book. I mean, I, I don't know, I talk about that and I'm just like, oh my God, that's huge, Aww. you're putting it out. Someone once said to me, okay, you've put that out in the universe now. Now you have to do it. And yeah, just, exactly. You've asked for it, so it's on its way. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work, but I don't feel like I traveled enough. A lot of the okay. places I went were for jobs. Yeah. And you travel, you, you're on set and actually you get to see amazing elements of the places because they're normally not for general um view yeah so 
I've loved that element, but I haven't actually explored. I didn't really <laughs> do all backpacking, and I didn't because you were there to work, weren't you? And, and like you were explaining, you're you're a very very focused person when you're at work because you you know that reputation is is obviously really important so I think I think it's probably so ingrained in you to focus on the task in hand you maybe didn't have enough time to you know have a look so maybe doing touristy stuff might might be good for you well I, I my my kids are both um I think they've inherited that from me and their father and that we, we like to explore and we curious. Yeah. Um, and we all love history and everything. So I'm hoping that we can get some norm normality returning. Yeah, uh, definitely. Really, really get to that um, and make that a priority. Uh, make up for the last two years of not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holidaying in the living room. <laughs> Although I have to say, we've, we've never ever done staycations. We've always gone away. And especially okay. if you're living in, you know, far flung places. Yeah. Um, but my husband's taken the initiative over the last two months and we've done Portsmouth, which was so exciting because we've been oh. to the victory. Yeah, um, wow. And we did a night at in Bath, which my husband mm -hmm. arranged for my birthday. And we did the, I, I ha have to rec recommend this. If you go to Bath, you've got to do the evening walkabout of the, um, the Roman Baths. Because and I don't think yeah. it's going on but at the moment they are allowing people to go in until nine o'clock at night and oh, wow. just all the, it's all candle lit and it really lends itself to this kind of ambiance you know like how would mm -hmm. we be there? and we absolutely we were the last people allowed in at nine o'clock and we loved it so um i highly recommend that and then we've done yeah. one, two nights in whitstable which mm -hmm. bizarrely i've been to whitstable a couple of times Four jobs and actually never seen Whitstable. <laughs> I had seen beautiful houses and like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we did that and we did Dover Castle and we did the. This is where the bucket list idea came out because of the White Cliffs of Dover. Because oh, I saw all... that post of yours. Yeah, yeah. Although I was terrified the entire time because I'm I have a fear of heights and my legs just turned to jelly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Trying to balance to take the shot. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and bizarrely, speaking of that kind of having that other persona, work persona, there have been plenty of times when, you know, you have to do a skiing job. I can't ski. Well, I can ski, but like more to just get myself down the mountain. Um, but, you know, suddenly you're like, oh, now I'm a skier. And you just take on this, <laughs> this look. Or can you horse ride? Yeah, yeah, I can horse ride. You know, Yes, do anything. I was like, yes, that horse is like, by the way, not going to put a saddle on. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's like, horses can smell fear. Okay. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. So, it just yeah, reminded me, it reminded me when you said that about, um, so I was just about to ask you, have you, have you ever said that you're, that you can do something, you know, I don't know if you've watched Friends, but when Joey makes out that he can speak French, it, it just made me instantly think of that. Have you ever been in that situation where you've not been able to wing it? Yes, yes, have I have. You? And it's embarrassing. I have never been able to do, I, I can't really do a handstand. I'm like, it's pretty revolting, I, my version of a handstand. Uh, <laughs> revolting. Can you do a cartwheel? Of course I can do a cart. Everyone can do a cart. I cannot do a cartwheel. And they discovered this on the job. Now, as you know, I mean, like, I'm uber professional. And it's, just, it's, it's, still, it's like those things when you have insomnia and sort of suddenly your brain goes, oh, my God, remember that time you couldn't do a cartwheel? And well, the job was like, you know. <laughs> so that and... Um, I've, I've done quite a few underwater jobs, bizarrely, and I've been in the tank at Pinewood Studios, and they're like, okay, you're, you're fine with being underwater, and you, you absolutely, you can hold your breath, and you're so, yeah, yeah, no problem. I tell you what, that tank is deep, and you feel oh, like you're in the middle, and you have to release, there's a, there's a trick to it, you have to release all the air out of your system, so that you okay. can and then you've got to go and you've got to do all these beautiful floaty things because you've got all this gorgeous like outfit underwater and you've got to go low enough so that they can film you through the window. 
no, I can't. I, I just do not know how I got through that job. I'd have, rather, I'd have been like nearly drowning myself. Oh. <laughs> I bet the pictures came out beautiful though because you only need one shot that's what Tyra Banks used to say <laughs> but it's getting that one shot that yeah you could do <laughs> without drowning yes I did get to shoot as a result of that I got to shoot with Zena Holloway who if you've ever seen Zena's work she does the most exquisite underwater photography wow. and that in her life because wow I mean just shooting with her and the imagery is that she's done and she's done a lot of stuff for I think American America's Next Top Model or British yeah. Model she does all the underwater photography for for them so wow yeah you just have to kind of jump off the edge to to yeah say yes just say yes to everything it'll be fine yeah and you never know where it's going to lead as well do you that's that's the most important thing Oh, on that lovely positive note, uh, then I'm going to thank you for coming on. It's, it's been wonderful to talk to you and so, so interesting. Um, and I really appreciate it. Before we go, um, can you just tell everybody where they can find you? Uh, well, my Instagram handle is all things Zahn and I will obviously put on there when my website uh, launches and of course mm -hmm. uh, sign in for fashion fix live which is available on spotify at the moment we've got our first six episodes and uh, we'll be going live on the 10th of september exciting everybody make sure you tune in and catch up if you've not listened to it already because it's fabulous with four fabulous women um yeah Thank you so much, San. I really appreciate it. It's been absolutely lovely to talk to you. Um, and yes, we shall catch up soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Have you. Bye.